and religious liberty. Civil liberty because they will be free from the oppression and yoke of ruthless and greedy kings of England and religious liberty since they will be able to worship God in spirit and in truth and not the Pope and his representatives. Amen. For over two months, the 120 or 102 passengers, they braved the harsh elements of a vast storm to sea and finally with firm purpose and a reliance on divine providence, the cry of the land was heard. Arriving in Massachusetts in late November, the pilgrim sought a suitable landing place and on December 11, just before disembarking at Plymouth Rock, they signed the Mayflower Compact, America's first document of civil government and the first to introduce self-government. After a prayer service, the pilgrims or the immigrants began building hasty shelters. However, because they were unprepared for the starvation, and sickness of a harsh New England winter nearly have died before spring. And yet, persevering in prayer and assisted by helpful Indians, they reaped a bountiful harvest the following summer. The grateful pilgrims then declared a three day feast starting on November 13, 1621, to thank God and to celebrate with their Indian friends. And while this was not the first Thanksgiving in America, since Thanksgiving service was held in Virginia as early as 1607, it was America's first Thanksgiving festival. In 1789, <coughs> following a proclamation issued by President George Washington, America celebrated its first day of Thanksgiving to God under its new constitution. That same year, the Protestant Episcopal Church, of which President Washington was a member, announced that the first Thursday in November will become its regular day by giving thanks, unless another day is appointed by civil authorities. Yet despite this national proclamation, official thanksgiving observation usually occurred only at the state level. Much of the credit for the adoption of a little annual national thanksgiving day may be attributed to Mrs. Sarah Joseph Hay, the editor of Goodest Ladies Book, for 30 years she promoted the idea of a National Thanksgiving Day, contacting presidents after presidents until President Abraham Lincoln responded in 1863 by setting aside the last Thursday of November as a national day of Thanksgiving. Over the next 75 years, presidents followed Lincoln's presidents, annually declaring a National Thanksgiving Day, and then in 1941, the Congress permanently established the fourth day of each November as a national holiday. Lincoln's original 16, 1863 Thanksgiving Proclamation came, spiritually speaking, as a pivotal point in his life. During the first week of July of that year, the Battle of Gettysburg occurred, resulting in the loss of some 60,000 American lives. Four months later in November, Lincoln delivered his famous Gettysburg Address. It was while Lincoln was walking among the thousands of graves there at Gettysburg that he committed his life to Christ. As he explained to a friend, when I left Springfield to assume the presidency, I asked the people to pray for me. I was not a Christian. When I buried my son, the severest trial of my life, I was not a Christian. But when I went to Gettysburg and saw the grace of thousands of our soldiers, I then and there consecrated my life to Christ. Amen. As Americans celebrate Thanksgiving each year, we hope they will retain the original gratefulness to God displayed by the pilgrims and many other founding fathers. And remember, that it is to those early and courageous pilgrims that we all hope not only the traditional Thanksgiving holiday, but also the concepts of self-government, the hard work, ethic self-reliance communities, and devout religious faith. Thanksgiving is gratitude to God in response to blessings, protection, and love.
in the Judeo-Christian tradition, gratitude is not a tool used to manipulate the will of God. It is never coerced or fabricated in one's personality to God. In the Old Testament, gratitude to God was the only condition in which life could be enjoyed. For Jews, every aspect of creation provided evidence of God's lordship over all life. Amen. The Hebrew people thank him for the magnificence of the universe, as we read in Psalm 19, verses 1 to 4. The heavens declare the glory of God. Yes. And the firmament showed his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showed knowledge. There is no speech, no language, where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them had he set a tabernacle for the sun. When they rejoice, or when they receive good news, they thank God for his goodness and great deeds. As evidence in 1 Chronicles 16, 8-12, Give thanks unto the Lord, call unto his name, and make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. And then, <clears throat> rejoice and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he had done. His wonders and the judgment of his mouth. When they received bad news. They also gave thanks, trusting that he was a just God. As we also see in Job 1.21, and said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return neither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The people of Israel thank God for his faithfulness, to the covenant promises which he made with Abraham, with Isaac, Jacob, and to David. The Bible therefore teaches us that our God will always delight in us if we always give gratitude to him in whatever situation we may find ourselves as in the following examples. For deliverance from the enemies, we saw in Psalm 18, verse 17, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me. Also in Psalm 30, 8 to 12, I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth, and gather me with gladness. Amen. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee, and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. 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 And for forgiveness of sin, as we also see in Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgave the iniquity of my sin. Amen. And for answers to prayer, as we read also in Psalm 28, 6 to 7, Blessed be the Lord, because he had heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. Amen. And for executing justice, we also see in Deuteronomy 32, 4, he is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. O God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. And for continuing guidance, we also see in Isaiah 30, 20-21, And though the Lord gave you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yes, shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers, 
and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When ye return to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. If we then ask ourselves this morning, that apart from life, the fresh air that we breathe, and the basic necessities that we do enjoy, what else do we need to be thanking God for? Some people do seriously believe that money can buy whatever they want. But is that true? What then can money cannot buy since the Bible teaches us that God owes everything under the sun? Let us compare what money buys in contrast to what money cannot buy. Money can buy food, but not appetite. How many people today? How many people today have money? And despite the fact that they are not suffering from any physical disabilities, will not get appetite to eat due to many earthly problems. The Bible being the words of God, has seen through the limitations of the mortals. And in Philippians 4, 10 to 11, it reads, I'm glad in God, for happier than you will ever guess. I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. Mm -hmm. I have learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. Yes. Amen. Amen. It is when we are at peace. Mm -hmm. In Christ Jesus, that we can see food and have appetite to eat. Amen. But when we are confronted with distress, mm. with affliction, yeah. with grief, mm. with persecution, mm. with sorrow, mm. with sufferings, yeah. with tribulations and trouble, just like Job, when Satan afflicted him with total loss of his family, mm. or King David, where God pronounced death on his unborn child mm. with Uriah's wife, or our Holy Mary, Mother of Jesus, when she saw her son hanging on the cross for our sin, mm -hmm. how could such people have appetite to eat? Mm -hmm. We too have experienced similar situations in our lives. Mm -hmm. And if today we can see food and have appetite to eat, is it not worth a thanksgiving? Hallelujah. Yes. Money can buy a full library of books but not wisdom. No. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power, mm -hmm. true they say. But power and authority without wisdom is also a danger to the beholder. Yes. King Solomon had power. He had authority and high knowledge as a prince of a great king. Yet he still pleaded with God for wisdom and understanding mm -hmm. because he too realized that power without wisdom mm -hmm. is like a double-edged sword yes. and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yes. It is with wisdom that we can successfully administer our business. It is with wisdom that we can successfully administer our church yes. and our homes. Amen. It has been seen that an intelligent but a stupid husband hmm. cannot sustain a healthy marriage hmm. or guarantee a happy home. Amen. It takes miracle yes. to get anyone out of trouble. But it takes wisdom to keep someone from getting into trouble. Yes. Yes. In the book of James 1 to 5, the Bible knowing how precious wisdom is for us, teaches us. When I am deficient in wisdom, I ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly, without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given to me. And also we read in Proverbs 1 5. The wise also we hear, an increase in learning, and the person of understanding will acquire skill and attain to sound counsel, yes. so that he may be able to steer his course rightly. And Proverbs 19.20 also reads, I hear counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction, that I may be wise in the time to come. How many of us always feel disrespected when we are corrected. Mm. Sometimes we feel we are somehow above correction mm -hmm. since we have clothed ourselves with the old garments of pride and bloated ego. Mm. And not until we learn the hard way Amen. 
where we get into an avoidable embarrassment and emotional crisis. We must make today a turning point in our life to follow the path of wisdom. Amen. Proverbs 19, 8 reads, He that gets wisdom loves his own soul. He that keeps understanding shall find good. Amen. Money can buy a mansion, but not a home. And what is the purpose of living in a mansion when your life is empty? It is like a loving wife going to work in the morning and finds happiness at work. And when the thought of coming back to that mansion flickers through her mind, it makes her shiver with fear and resentment because money cannot buy happiness. A mansion without happiness is not a home. A home should be a place of refuge for both couples. Amen. But when the husband has to branch to McDonald's or a Chinese restaurant and get his appetite fully satisfied <laughs> before heading home to face his ever nagging and bad tempered wife, <laughs> waiting for another bag of Baba Cold War, it is no more a home. Or when the wife has to come to face an ungrateful braggart and immature accuser of her husband who does not even believe that God exists, it is no more a home. As a married counselor, I always advise my young married couples to acquaint themselves with the word of God as we read in Colossians 3, 8 to 10. And Colossians 12, 14. I put him away and rid myself completely of all those things that anger, rage, bad feelings towards my spouse, curses and slander and foul mouth abuse, and shameful utterances from my lips. I do not lie, for I have stripped off the old, undegenerated self with its evil practices and has put myself as God's own chosen one. And in verses 12 to 14, God's child who is purified and holy and well beloved by God himself by putting on a behavior marked by tender-hearted pity and mercy, kind feelings, a lowly opinion of myself, gentle ways and patience, which is tireless and long-suffering, and has the power to endure whatever comes, and good temper. I am gentle and forbearing, readily pardoning others, even as the Lord has freely forgiven me. And above all these things, I put on love, and enfold myself, my family, with the bond of perfectness, which binds everything together in ideal harmony. In order for any home, or any church, or any organization to experience progress and growth, it must have the spirit of Christ Jesus dwelling therein, as explained by the words of God in Colossians 5, 22 to 26. But the fruit of the spirit is love, is joy, is peace, is long-suffering, is gentleness, is goodness, is faith, is meekness, is temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in this Spirit. Amen. Let us not be desirous of being glory, provoking one another, helping one another. Amen. Money can buy a king-sized bed, but not sleep. No. I used to sleep on king-sized bed. But it takes me time to sleep. I didn't know why. But in the book of Psalm 127.2, we are told, it is vain for you to rise up very early, yes. to retire home very late, yes. to eat the bread of painful labor, for the Lord gives to his beloved even in his sleep. Amen. What is the point? If you walk all the days of your life and have no time to serve and worship God, are we the owners of ourselves? It was this vanity of man's thought which the psalmist saw 
when he said, teach us, O Lord, to number our days so that we have the wisdom to be accountable and appreciate the few days we have on this earth. Amen. We are then is the wisdom. If I gain the whole world and lose my soul. Amen. In Ecclesiastes 5, 10 to 12, it reads, He who lost money will not be satisfied with money. Now he who loves abundance with his income, mm. this too is vanity. Amen. When the good things increase, those who consume them also increase. So what is the advantage of their owners except to look on? Mm. The sleep of the working man is pleasant, whether he eat little or much. But the full stomach of the rich man does not allow him to sleep. Mm. Because you will buy it and you spend the whole day betting. <laughs> We <laughs> really thank God. Amen. Because I was uh, having a conversation with them, an elder someday. He just reminded me today when I'm reading this thing that when the good things increase, those who consume them also increase. Yes. When you start accumulating, working, working like a jackass 24 hours. <laughs> To be, to buy, to buy. People that are enjoying it oh. will be at home enjoying it. And you'll be slaving your head over here. <laughs> and the same way you get to the steering wheel, you say, ah, you wake up again. Yes. So I'm now seeing the reason. You see, the, the, because they said the full stomach of the rich man does not allow him to sleep. So for the mere fact that we come home after a hard day's work, and we are able to sleep without stuffing our body with sleeping tablets and pill relieving pills every night for this simple reason. It is God's grace and we should always be thankful. Hallelujah. Amen. Today I sleep like a baby. I don't have any problem at all and I give thanks to God. I don't know about you. Yes, money can buy medicine. But not health. While we are not condemning the need for conventional medical therapies, we have also often seen cases where when everything has failed, we resorted to the power of prayer, and we have never been disappointed. We have received several testimonies of miraculous healings which defy any scientific or medical explanation, except that it is a miracle. So where does this miracle come from? The Bible explains thus also in James 5, 14 to 15. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church. And they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And let me take that one again because it has a message for us this morning. Hallelujah. Is there anyone among you sick? Hmm. Then, he must call for the elders of the church. And they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. I would like to believe this morning that we do have elders in this church. So we can all see what great responsibilities God has put in the care of elders of the church. A year ago, I charged all the elders in this church to step up into their role in the church which God has ordained. Once you have survived the significant 40 years of toil and labor in the wilderness of the world, you are presumed to have attained the virtue of elders and all the tools you require to serve God and your fellow brethren in the Church of Christ. Some critics may be inclined to challenge the significance of the 40 years. Moses was trained as a powerful prince of the great kingdom of Egypt, where King Pharaoh was then the most powerful king on earth. The next 40 years of his life, he was restricted to the wilderness for another 40 years as a shepherd. Tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, 
but actually undergoing training to make him an elder, a leader, a liberator, and the man whom God trusted with his miseries. It was from Jethro, his father-in-law, that Moses received the Melchizedek priesthood, and he gave Moses some practical advice about administrative delegation of responsibility, yes. as we could see in Exodus 18, 18 to 27. It took me a long time to really fully understand what the elders meant when they say a fool at 40 is a fool forever. Amen. <laughs> and I often wonder what is special about this 40 Amen. and not 21. The age of maturity as before during my own time, but now reduced to 18 years. And I hope they will not reduce the age of maturity to 16. <laughs> but for God, at 40, you can be entrusted with greater responsibilities. Amen. And that does not mean that under 40, you may not be considered worthy of great stewardship. Amen. Prophet Samuel knew God in his youth. King David was still a young man when God anointed him. And likewise, King Solomon and many of our modern servants of the Most High God, who are called into the ministry of Christ, before 40 years. Amen. And this to me is a grace of Christ Jesus and a great privilege worthy of thanksgiving. Amen. What is significant about 40? For all those who have successfully been guided through these 40 years of life challenges. 1. Exodus 16.35 And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. In Exodus 24, 18, And Moses went into the midst of the cloud, and got him up into the mount. The Moses, and Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. And also in Numbers 14, 33, And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your wardom until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Then in Deuteronomy 25.3, 40 stripes he may give him, and not exceed this, lest if he should exceed and beat him above this with many stripes, then thy brother should seem violent to thee. And then in Jonah 3.4, and Jonah began to enter into the city this journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And then in Matthew 4, 1 to 2, there was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. And then in Acts 1, 3, to this he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Amen. And lastly, does it not sound mysterious? And remarkable that after childbirth, the healing process for the reproductive organs also takes about 40 days. Amen. I never used to forget my mother's advice. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Once again, I am calling on all of us above 40. To so begin to see ourselves as elders in the church, Amen. in whose hands are the stability and 